Now, a couple of weeks ago, the magnificent Citizens of the World Choir, which is made up of people from like 28 different countries, half of which are refugees. They performed at the Houses of Parliament. And while they were there, they also recorded two songs for us here on Good Morning Christmas. In a minute, I'm going to talk to the choir's co-founder and musical director, conductor Becky Dell. That's going to be a joy uh, about that experience, about the wonderful work that celebrates the artistry and the heritage and the humanity of people seeking sanctuary. But first, let's hear the choir in full voice singing one of my favourites, so much so we even had it at our wedding. Here they are with Sia Humber. jazz hands everybody the citizens of the world choir with Sia Hamba and I'm delighted to say that joining us now on the show is the choir's musical director and co-founder the gorgeous Becky Dell happy Christmas welcome to the show my darling Oh, Merry Christmas. Thanks so much for having us. What a wonderful way to start Christmas Day. I know, right? I mean, if you could see me, I've got a halo on and a tinsel caftan. I'm living my best life. I'm loving that for you. I have got a Christmas onesie on. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it is the season for forgetting all taste and propriety and all that sort of stuff, isn't it? Uh, you've had a busy year, haven't you? Oh my goodness, we have. It's been so amazing. We're so grateful. Uh, this project from the beginning has felt like it's full of serendipity and love and we're just so grateful for all the support. So thank you to everyone who supported us. Tell us about performing in the Houses of Parliament. That must have been a quite the gig. 
Oh my goodness, it was amazing. So we performed in the Speaker's House, um, which is just the most beautiful part of the Houses of Parliament, really stunning. And it was a, an event co-hosted by the UNHCR and the FCDO. Uh, this was the London launch for the Global Refugee Forum that was happening in Geneva the, the week after. So, so we did the London launch and it was an absolute joy and honour to be part of that. And tell me about the idea for the choir, the Citizens of the World Choir. How did it all start? It started in early 2017 in response to the refugee crisis in Europe. It was the brainchild of our founding father, the amazing Lord Roger Roberts. Uh, he was part of the Dubs Amendment. He was a second signatory mm. to the Dubs Amendment, which wanted 3,000 vulnerable children to be brought to the UK. And sadly, it got voted no in Parliament. And he'd spent a sleepless night worrying about these children. And uh, he had an idea at three o'clock in the morning, as the best ideas often, <laughs> often happen. <laughs> And he contacted me the next day and said, how about we do something for people already over here? And being a Welsh man who loves choirs, he said, let's set up a choir. And so the Citizens of the World Choir was born. Oh, that just sounds like such a good idea, doesn't it? It's such a beautiful, beautiful thing, bringing people together. And so paint us a picture. What does it, what does it look like? Who's in the choir? What nationalities? Mm, so we have about 40 to 50 people in our full choir representing 28 different nationalities from around the world. We have people from Ukraine, Syria, Iraq, Iran, Afghanistan, Pakistan, um, Congo, uh, Nigeria, Italy, like so the allied members as well. So it's 50 50 split between refugees or displaced human beings and non displaced human beings. So our allied members come from all over Europe, from Wales, from Scotland, from Ireland, um, it's uh, from Australia even. So um, we're a wonderfully eclectic bunch. I always say we're a rainbow tribe. None of us look like each other. And that's such a beautiful thing where we're all of humanity in, in one beautiful choir and community. It sounds like a gorgeous family choir as well. It sounds like a wonderful family. Well, we asked one of the members, Debbie, who found a home in Britain a few years ago to explain just what the choir means to her and how it's helped. This is what she had to say. Hello, I'm Debbie. I'm from West Africa. I joined the Citizen of the World Choir almost four years ago. Singing together with this wonderful family has helped me in a lot of ways, such as with connectedness. It has created a channel of opportunity for me to go to places that I wouldn't have thought of going, not to talk of singing there. An example of this is when we were invited to sing at Queen's Platinum Jubilee and also at Glastonbury, at Babi Khan stage and many more. Citizen of the World Choir has benefited both local and global community in the sense that foreign-born people like myself and British-born people are regularly coming together as one big family bonded via the power of singing together. Isn't that great? There is also benefit of acceptance, care, kindness, friendship within the group. This group has brought so much joy, not just to the community, but to every displaced individual members within the group, which proved to us that there are people in Britain who cares. Thank you so much for speaking to us, Debbie. Uh, tell me, Becky, about the unifying power of music. What happens when people get together and sing? Oh my goodness. I mean, I just had the biggest smile on my face oh. listening to Debbie. <laughs> Debbie talk just then. I'm so proud of her. I love her so much. I love all of them so much. And I often say that as the conductor, I've got the best seat in the house because I get to see the joy on people's faces when they sing. And there's something amazing about the power of singing. It brings you to the present. You forget about the past. You forget about the future. And you're firmly in the present. You're enjoying the music. You're enjoying bonding as a community, singing together. And, you know, the science behind groups of people singing singing is, is incredibly strong. Your heart starts to beat as one and it, it, it helps your vagus nerve. It helps calm your whole system. So I think singing should be prescribed. Um, you know, social, social singing should be prescribed. It's good for everybody. Join a choir. Do you know what? If, you're, if your listeners aren't part of a choir, I'm going to set them a New Year's challenge to join a choir. Well, you might not have said that if you could hear us trying for the descant on O Come All Ye Faithful at Midnight Mass last night. It was, I mean, it was enthusiasm. <laughs> 
optimism over tunefulness is what we went for. And I guess that counts for something. Must do, right? Absolutely. I say that everyone can sing. It is our birthright to sing, to dance, to love. So let's do it. It doesn't matter what it sounds like. Let's all just sing and enjoy being together. Oh, what a wonderful message. I think that's the truth for Christmas as well. Let's sing and dance and love today. Uh, we're going to play a second track now. It's uh, Shedrick is singing uh, Citizens of the World Choir for us. Uh, so it's going to be just beautiful. Becky, thank you so much for talking to us. Have a wonderful Christmas and don't take that onesie off. You keep it on all day. I love that. I'm cooking the Christmas dinner, so I'll see how long I can keep it on for. Oh, it might get a bit warm. <laughs> Thanks for chatting. Have a lovely day, darling. You too. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, my love. Cedric and the Citizens of the World Choir. My big thanks to Becky Dell, the choir's musical director and co-finder, for speaking to me this morning. If you want to find out more about the work of the choir, you can by going to their website, citizensoftheworldchoir.org. That's citizensoftheworldchoir.org, and it's well worth a look. More music, more text coming up in the next hour here on Good Morning Christmas with me, the Reverend Kate Botley, keeping you company all the way through until 10 o'clock this morning.